Hello. Hello. Uh, how's it going? Um, sleepy as always. Yeah. Quite sleepy. It's been it's been a week. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. So um I haven't had a chance to to look at the slideshow you sent me. So why don't you run through it with me now? Okay. I have started sharing my screen now. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. So title slide. Mm -hmm. Well, give it so give it as though you're giving the presentation. Oh, um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I'm prepared for that, but it'll try. Okay. Well, I mean, the only way to prepare is to to do it. So for the introduction, I would just say like my name. And yeah, well, so what what they'll do is they'll, you know, the the chair of the session, the person who uh, is um is overseeing the session, will be like something. We'll say something like, and next up, um, uh, we have Augustos who is, and they may say the title of your slide. Um, so uh, they're going to be talking on the impact of next generation X-ray telescopes, or they may just say, next up is Augustos. Um, if they read out the name of the, uh, the presentation, then there's no need for you to repeat it. Okay. You can just say, you know, uh, um, you can just be like, thank you. Um, I'm going to present some research done at AM Commerce, um, working with uh, Dr. Newton, something like that. Okay. And do I have like all the information I need presented here? Yeah. I mean, the, the title slide, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, it's, okay. it's, I will put your name more front and center. I would shift the title up a little bit, put your name underneath it in a in a bigger font than it is now, um, and then you can leave me and the university and the grant number where it is. But uh, you know, don't you should make sure that you uh. Should I put like by or should I? Just type just name. just your name. Yeah, the the standard thing to do is just yeah, no, perfect. It unfolded, so it's not exactly the same. Yeah, no, that looks that looks good. Okay. Okay. Um. So I will say the name of the presentation if they don't say it. Yeah. Okay. And they're introducing me, so I don't need to introduce myself. Uh no. Okay. Cool. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna write that down. Um. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, why does it want to not type? Okay, never mind. I just want to type right now. I'll worry about it later. This this is recorded. I'll send you the recording. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> okay, so... To clarify, I just say... I am presenting research I did at Texas A&M University at Commerce mm -hmm. with Dr. Newton. Yeah, yeah. 
and then mix slide. Um, so I found this picture, and then when I was looking through like some of the slides you sent me before, I saw you use the same picture. So yeah, this the it's very um. You'll see the same pictures over and over again on <laughs> those people's presentations. They get, they yeah. they, they make the rounds. So, yeah, but this is a good. Picture. I thought it was a cool picture though, because it like, is. Is, if I'm remembering correctly, it's a size comparison with Manhattan Island. Yes, that's right. Just say something like neutron stars are really small comparatively, but they're super massive, they're like one to two times the mass of our sun. And they're super dense and they've got extremely strong gravity. And you yeah. could fit a neutron star on the island of Manhattan. Yeah. Probably would not be pleasant, but you could. You could, but yeah. You could jam it on the Empire State Building or something. Mm -hmm. um, you should mention uh, they are one possible outcome of supernova explosions. Okay. Just mention where they come so from. They... Trying to remember the the mass of the original star. It's uh, above roughly ten solar masses. Okay, I was gonna say ten, but that seemed like too nice a number. But <laughs> well, it's it's a fuzzy boundary. Um, yeah, you can probably get stars as low as eight or a bit below that solar mass, okay. but ten is. is a uh, a good um figure to have in mind um and if it gets above 20 if it, if the original star is above 20 solar masses you can get a black it, hole it'll be a black hole yeah exciting yeah so i would i, I don't necessarily need to put that information on the slide, but I should say it, or do you think I should put the information on the slide too? I would put just one bullet point saying um, one possible outcome of supernova of supernovae. Okay. And then you can mention you know, it's stars starting out above 10 mass times the mass of the sun, eventually their core collapses when they run out of um, fusionable material. Okay. So mention come from supernova, talk about their mass and mm -hmm. their radius, and mention that they're dense and have strong gravity. Yeah. Yes. And point out the I think one point to make, and this is worth uh, adding a bullet point as well, um, is that uh, they, the part of what makes them so interesting is they contain matter under the most extreme conditions possible in the universe. Okay. Right, you cannot squeeze matter any higher in density or pressure. Okay. Right. It'll turn into a black hole and then all the matter's gone. It's disappeared. So there's. Okay. So come from supernova, one of the, the outcomes. They went to two times the mass of our sun. They've got a pretty small radius compared to other stars, they're dense got strong gravity and that's like the most compressed matter can be without being a black hole mm -hmm. okay yeah 
So I, here's a, here's a tip. Um, I like uh, to have the, the title of each slide should be like the, the big message you want to give people from that slide, right? Rather than asking a question that you then go on to answer on the slide. Okay. Um, because in a way, the question is, isn't is particular, like, uh, you're going to have to tell them what neutron stars are so they know mm -hmm. that that question is coming. So, for example, you could title this slide and, and do it across the top, something like uh, neutron stars... Uh, contain the most exotic matter in the universe. Okay. And then the bullet points, you outline what a neutron star is and just fill that in more. But then uh. they're being hit over the head with the sort of real, the bottom line message we want to send. But... Okay. Uh, that's going to be a common theme so far in this PowerPoint. I think all my titles are questions. So yeah, yeah, and we'll that's, very that. that's very common. Um, no, that's very common. I just what you're saying think, makes sense, though. I I think what you find is so this is very common amongst like all ranges of experience, right up to the, you know, the oldest professors, mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of it is that people just kind of learn from what their supervisors did and don't like because there's so much else to do with our time because we're so busy we tend not to think about things like what is the best way to convey information on a presentation mm -hmm. um but um but i kind of i'm i'm a uh a bit of a, uh, um, I don't know what you would call it. Uh, I'm I'm quite into thinking about how to display information in ways that get messages across mm -hmm. as best they can, and with uh, without the audience having to hunt for the information that you want to give. So, um. So yeah, this is just, I, I think it's a good thing to do because it forces you, what, what it does is it forces you to pick out the one piece of information on each slide that you want the audience to remember. Okay. Have in mind, right? They, they can't retain everything you tell them on each slide. And without you lead or guiding them, they're not going to know what is the single most important bit of information they need to uh, they need to know. Okay. Is there anything else we should fix no. with this slide? I think this. Yeah, this is good. Okay, move on to the next one, which also has a question as the yes. title. That, that picture of nicer. Nice. Uh. Mm -hmm. the, but it's an extra telescope on the International Space Station, and it's measured radii with precision like plus or minus one kilometer, I think what we talked about. I don't know if I should mention anything else about it. Uh, those are the basic facts. Um, so yeah, I would... Uh... I'm trying to think of how...
Uh, so I think this is good. I would, um, so for the title of this slide, um, you would, you know, it, it, the basic message is nicer, nicer is an X-ray telescope that measures neutron star radii. So mm -hmm. that would be the title. Some, something like that would be the title. Then you've got the picture and the acronym and the details about where the telescope is and what precision mm -hmm. it's measured radii to. But yeah, that's good. Okay. And then I got one for LIGO as well. Yeah. So here I would um the just to uh uh complement the nicer um slide the so LIGO measures one of the things that it's measured is the um tidal deformability of a neutron star okay um but uh the the um simple the sort of uh um the <clears throat> the level at the level that you want to present it at especially to uh um you know there'll be plenty of undergrad students in the audience and so on um so the non-technical um description would be it was would be something like LIGO um measures gravitational waves that and well LIGO can measure the squishiness of a neutron star I like the technical term you just use this beautiful yeah. yeah and it's not I it's uh there are popular articles that are that no, I've used I'm all for using simple words like that yeah so I would say that what would be good on both of these slides is to have a picture of so on the nicer slide this i mean it may be less necessary here but if like to have a a, a picture of a neutron star or a cartoon of a neutron star somewhere and just show what its radius, have a little arrow from the center to the surface. And mm. and then for the LIGO, I have the same neutron star picture, but it's like kind of squished down. Yeah. Okay, that would be fun. And, um, yeah, exactly. And for the LIGO one, put that squished down neutron star and, Put a put another little another neutron star sort of in the background of it, um, because the because um, the gravitational waves that LIGO is measuring are from the uh, in spiral and collision of two neutron stars. Okay. But um, yeah, cartoon pictures always help solidify. Mm -hmm things in the audience's mind okay and then next one i know it's not a next generation telescope but it, it it was fun for the transition this is for the the measurement thing yeah like the increased accuracy yes so just so, that by itself okay you should put on um what a couple of the next generation telescopes are. Um, uh, let me, so unfortunately, 
uh, literally a week ago, one of the next generation telescopes that was proposed to NASA um, didn't get selected for the next round. Like they, you know, the various people pitch telescopes and they have to compete against each other for the for the funding. And um, one of them didn't get through, but there were a couple more. Um, let me, uh, what else? Well, if I can find pictures of them, I will cut them out and use them here instead yeah. of the Chandra telescope. That was just one of the first telescope pictures that came up when I searched the free use images on Google. <laughs> Okay, here's, I'll drop these links in the chat. Here's one that was just launched, so probably isn't technically next generation. Um, it's kind of cute. It's just a little <laughs> guy. And then there is New Star. Which again has just been launched. And here we go, Athena. That's the one. I think the, the Athena is the big one. Um, put the link in the chat. Okay, so yeah, you can uh, list, um, you could maybe include one image. Um, of course, Athena isn't built yet, so. Mm -hmm. But um, there are almost certainly cartoon pictures of it that look dramatic. I like dramatic.
Here's a link with a uh, dramatic picture of the telescope. Oh, yes, that's, that's very dramatic. It is misleading like... in front of a accreting, uh, so we either an accreting neutron star or black hole. Well, for the telescope's sake, I hope that's a neutron star. Yeah. So it doesn't get pulled into oblivion or whatever. Yeah. Unless that's what it wants to do, then I guess I won't stop it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, next slide. So this one, I was a little lost on what to put on it. Um, you, so you mentioned that, so do you have the slides from the summer? I do, yeah. Um, could you pull them up? Mm-hmm. So I compiled them all together here. Um, because they copied and pasted them. They're a little mm -hmm. ugly, but um, I'm still seeing the presentation. Oh, I think I hold on a second. area i was only sharing an application okay. i wasn't sharing my own screen yeah. yeah all right um i guess if you scroll up to the top let's see what the thing from the paper yeah and then like the comparing stuff and then that's when we pulled the Data using plot digitizer. And then this one, we're finding like probabilities and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, That's the code for it. What? Um, so, hang on, let me pull up. A, let me find one of my slides that shows what I had in mind. You've got you've got half of the slide that I had in mind. Yeah, I don't know if I ever specifically went over the equation of state directly. Right. The closest thing I have is like the the MCMC stuff right well okay so the so the equation of state is pressure versus density and you have that plot i saw um in the other in your actual presentation that you just showed me uh this guy yeah so there's a plot of the equations of state Right. And um, that gets input. So what happens is, um, what could you copy? So there's a, the picture on one of the summer slides, the, the plot of the uh, mass radius, all the mass radius curves. And I think it's with the, um, the oh. low mass neutron star. Okay. Measurement on it. It's in the summer research one. Oh, it's, so it's in the present. It, so you had a, all the summer research sl slides. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So if you scroll to the top. Yeah, that one. This so that is 
mass versus radius. So if you copy that and put it on the same, like, okay, so make, so you're gonna make a slide, a new slide um, above where you have that mm -hmm. little, uh, where, above the neutron star equations of state slide. Yeah, above that slide. And add that and then add next to it on the left, the equation of state plot. Which one? The, the equation of state plot, the pressure. The... This one? Yep. Right. And um, so the what what you were saying with words on the uh, the neutron star equations of state slide. So P of rho is the figure on the left. Right. OK. Right, that's P of rho. That's in fact, that's thousands of different P's of different equations of state. Right, but each one is just a line of pressure versus density. Okay. And what you do, so that what the equation of state tells you is, if I give you matter at a given density, what is the pressure of that matter? Okay. And okay. the equation of state doesn't know anything about neutron stars or anything, right? It's just give you a density, give me a pressure. Doesn't care about where this matter is or what circumstances have led it to be at that density. Um, but, uh, so, but we know that, um, that uh, neutron stars are things at that density. So if we're gonna describe neutron stars, we need the equation of state um, over that density range. And what we do, so the basic picture is that um, the, the star is stable if the pressure, the internal pressure of the star, which pushes outwards, balances the force of gravity trying to pull it inwards. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. So, and that is an equation. It's all you have, if you write down an equation for the, the pressure force and the gravitational force and set them equal, you get an equation that you can then solve. And the solution and, and the input to that equation is an equation of state. You have to specify what P is as a function of density you solve the equation and you get out mass as a function of radius. Okay. So every single equation of state gives a unique prediction for a mass, the mass versus radius um, curve. Right. So every single one of those little of those lines on the plot on the right is a predicted mass radius relationship and it comes from and every single one of those lines comes from an equation of state that will be generally somewhere in amongst all those equations of state plotted on the left okay does that make sense uh, I think so, yeah. So, yeah, I, so I think, yeah, I, I, um, Yeah.
yeah. So the equation that I mentioned that is the balance of uh, pressure and gravity is the hydrostatic equilibrium equation. Because hydro means fluid and the neutron star is a fluid. Static means it isn't moving. Equilibrium means it is in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's just the equation of of uh, a fluid in equilibrium under its own gravity. Um, where did I keep these two together in the presentation, or was that just for visualization for right now? Yeah, well, you want you're trying to create visually what you in slide seven wrote in words, but okay, but it uh, like. Just saying P versus Rho doesn't give a picture in the audience's mind of what it actually is. Okay. So That's... this slide will replace yeah. number seven. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And so you can have an arrow going from one of the equations of state to one of the mass radius lines. Um, and if I can find the presentation I'm thinking of. Um, I can give you the slide with the uh, the equation on the equation of hydrostatic equilibrium. Okay.
Okay, here, let me share my screen and I'll show you the slide. Okay. Uh... So I, I... Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so this is exactly the, I mean, so on the left, we've got pressure versus density, the equation of state. It's um, over a slightly shorter density region so it's only part of the the um the curves that you've got on your plot um and then on the right there's the mass radius curves and at the top is the equation of hydrostatic equilibrium for newtonian gravity um which is the one to show because if i flip to the next slide when you take into account general relativity, it just becomes messier. There isn't anything, there aren't any new quantities in it, it's just a messier equation. Um, so this is a differential equation, the rate of change of pressure with distance into the star um, is equal to this stuff, which is, you know, rho is density, m is the mass of the star, at a certain point in the star, and R is a certain distance in the star. Okay. So you take this equation, you plug, you so you have to you want to solve this equation for mass and radius of the star, but you've got two other unknowns, pressure and density. So you need one more equation to be able to solve this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so you need an equation that connects pressure and density to solve this equation. And that's the equation of state. So you take your pressure versus density curve, you plug it into here, you solve the differential equation, and you get out a mass versus radius curve. So that's the name of the game. That's it in a nutshell. That's like way simpler than I was thinking. I mean, I it's still not simple, but right. That makes so much more sense. Here, I'll uh, I'll just I'll just take a screenshot of this equation so you can bung it in. That'll be the easiest thing, and then you can okay. put arrow on your slide. Um, stop sharing. Okay, you can reshare. Um... Okay. Um, so yeah, so that takes care of slide. So slide seven goes away, and it's now slide six. And the the um, the heading of slide six can be something like. Uh, um every equation of state predicts a mass versus radius relationship make sure that whatever you write up here like you understand like at a deep level um yeah just Make make sure you don't write stuff on slides that you only kind of get or don't quite get. Okay. And if there is anything like that, eliminate it from the slide. Um, okay. So yeah, moving on. The, the slide's probably redundant. E, uh, yeah, I know that, that can. Um, yeah, I mean that that will if if we need. Yeah, it's 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 redundant. It's redundant. Leaving it. It's gone. Excellent.
Okay, so what do you want to say here? Uh, this one's just talking about the variables that we specifically care about. Mm -hmm. This is another thing I'm still slightly unclear on. Um, so you did you you said yesterday you had a picture of the neutron skin of lead because there was a slide on P-Rex or something during the summer. I I don't think that was me. I I I made a little picture though. Oh, okay, great. Yes, that's good. Um, so no, we care about radius, and we care about the neutron skin of lead. That's what these two things are. And then radius is astro and observable, and then neutron skin is our nuclear observable. Right. So mm -hmm. the so the key point here is that um. The uh, the um, the neutron star equation of state p versus rho. How where does it come from? It comes from a model of how neutrons and protons interact, right? Yeah. Um, our models of that are quite uncertain under conditions that you would find in a neutron star right we i mean we know very well how it works for nuclei on earth but we're not dealing with nuclei on earth so we can take our models our nuclear physics models our models for how new of the force between neutrons and protons um remember the we were going over the other day about you know the these are the models that give us the potential energy between two neutrons and protons that you then have to add up an average to get the total um, uh, potential energy of a whole system of neutrons and protons. Mm -hmm. uh, and that gives you the equation of state. Okay. Um, but the point is our models of how neutrons and protons interact of the potential energy um, you know, they're, they work fine and predict the properties of nuclei that we can measure very well because we've got data to inform those models. But when you take those same models and apply them to calculating the equation of state of neutron stars and subsequently the mass radius of neutron stars, then they give predictions all over the place, which is why you see on this slide here, loads of equations of state, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't know, like our, our nuclear models give a very wide range of predictions because we're applying it to matter that we cannot make in the laboratory. Okay. Right. So, but if you, if you flip back to the previous slide, right, it, the uh, the question of why measure the radius, well, if you measure the radius, then that tells you which of those mass radius curves you're on, right? If you are, imagine being able to exactly measure the radius of a neutron star to infinite precision, then you would be able to pick out um, one of those mass radius curves and in a sense that would be the well that would be the true mass radius relation in nature mm -hmm. but then you can just go backwards the other way along that arrow and from that mass radius relationship oh. get the neutron star that's uh, like the uh the nuclear equation of state okay and since that comes from 
since you uh, calculate the equation of state from some model of the interactions between neutrons and protons, you've now learned something about the interaction between neutrons and protons that you didn't know before. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so the um, I wish I, I my iPad is out of battery at the moment. I really wish I could draw. Um, anyway, so the, but because the, um, yeah, this neutron star mass radius curve comes from the equation of state, which comes from a model of how neutrons and protons interact. Um, the neutron skin of lead, which is a property of a nucleus on Earth, obviously has to come from the same place, right? It has to come from our models of how neutrons and protons interact, right? So our models of how neutrons and protons interact predict neutron star mass and radius, and they predict how thick the neutron skin of lead is, which is something that we can measure in the laboratory, although not mm -hmm. very not very precisely at the moment. Um, so, and you can, you can go along that chain in both directions, right? You've got, so you've, if you picture in your head, you've got a, a chain of four things linked together. You've got, uh, in the middle, you've got, the fundamental physics of how do neutrons and protons interact? What is the force between neutrons and protons, right? Once you have a model for that, you can then calculate the equation of state of a system of neutrons and protons, right? It's pressure versus density of a, you know, a fluid of neutrons and protons, okay? And from that, you can calculate the radius of a neutron star of a given mass. In other words, the mass radius relationship. But also from this model of how neutrons and protons interact, you can calculate the thickness of the neutron skin of lead. And the neutron skin of any other nucleus, but lead is the easiest one to measure. Right, so you've got the central model which predicts an equation of state and therefore neutron star radii, and also predicts the thickness of the neutron skin of lead. And therefore, if you measure the radius of a neutron star, working backwards, that'll give you, that will constitute a measurement of the equation of state, a measurement of the force between neutrons and protons, and a measurement of the neutron skin. That'll, that radius measurement of the neutron star has the knock-on effect of measuring all those other things, right? Okay. Or if you measure the neutron skin of lead, then that tells you about the force between neutrons and protons, which tells you about the equation of state, which tells you about the radius of a neutron star. So if you measure in our laboratory, the neutron skin of lead, then you are, uh, by, you know, you can go along this chain in the other direction, you're measuring force between neutrons and protons, equation of state, neutron star. And so at one end of the chain, you've got your astrophysical observable, and at the other end of the chain, you've got your nuclear observable, right? And the neutral and the astrophysical observable is this giant solar mass ball that's ten kilometers across, thousands of light years away. And the nuclear observable is a tiny, ten to the negative fifteen meter, large, 
uh, nucleus of a metal that is common on Earth. Mm -hmm. And both of these things are connected directly along this chain. So measuring something about one of them automatically tells you about something about the other. Right, which is the amazing thing, right? These are two mm -hmm. incredibly different systems, but the underlying physics that governs them both is the same. So our question is, if you measure the radius of a neutron star more precisely and go this way along the chain, how much more precisely do you measure the neutron skin of lead? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I think so. So I would like the, the equation of state and the nuclear model um, can kind of be condensed. Um, so that when you present it, it, it'll just be three things with the equation of state in the middle. Um, so what, what, what I would do is have a slide where in the middle of the slide is that equation of state plot that you've got there. On the right of it is that mass radius plot that you've got there. And on the left of it is your picture of the neutron skin of lead. Just put them all together in one slide. Yeah, well, you want them because the message you want the audience to take is that the neutron star and the neutron skin are linked via the equation of state. So from left to right, neutron skin, then the mass radius plot, and then the pressure versus this guy. Well, which, so uh, can you, um, so imagine that on your slide, how do you explain it to the audience? In other words, can you attempt a briefer version of the long-winded explanation I just gave? I'm not sure if I can at the moment. I'm still processing what you just told me. Right. I think. So what are the what are the things that we measure? Which which graphs or pictures show plots of things that we measure directly? I mean, we measure the the neutron star or not neutron star, the neutron skin. Yeah. Somewhat directly. Yeah, that's right. And from that information, you can get this guy, the the pressure plot. Yeah. For the neutron skin. And what's the other thing that we measure directly? I mean, kind of radius to yeah. a certain extent. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, I mean, we can get it bogged down in a discussion of what telescopes actually measure, but mm -hmm. yeah, the way we're getting reasonably directly the radius of a neutron star and the neutron skin of lead. And the same physics predicts them both. Why well, we know so wherever you are in the universe, neutrons and protons feel the same force. They interact in the same way, right? So there is some theory in nature, some model that tells you Put a bunch of neutrons and protons together this is the force that they feel or this is the potential energy that they have regardless of what those neutrons and protons are doing 
right? So that's the physics. That's the fundamental physics. Then you ask, well, how do I test that theory? And the answer is, well, I've got to go looking for places in the universe where neutrons and protons are. Because those thing, then those places will, like their properties will be determined by the forces between neutrons and protons. So you look around and you find, oh, here on Earth, we've got these things called nuclei that are made of neutrons and protons. So that's one place where we can, where the nuclear force, the neutron proton force determines the, the properties of this thing, this real thing in the world. And then we look around some more and we find out oh, there are these things thousands of light years away, which are, you know, to a very simple degree, uh, a big ball of neutrons with a few protons. So again, they must be deter their properties must be determined by the exact same physics. Right. So you've got the physics at the center, which is or your physics theory at the center, which is a model for the potential energy that you have when you've got a bunch of neutrons and protons together. And that physics predicts what do neutron stars look like and what do nuclei look like. Okay. Right. And the so plot that is standing, the, the plot that is the physics, the fundamental physics is the equation of state. Okay. Right, that equation of state comes from our physical model of how neutrons and protons interact. Right, and it that plot the again the equation of state, the pressure versus density. Every one of those pressure density curves doesn't know anything about neutrons. So, like that that equation of state plot would still be there if neutrons stars didn't exist and it would still be there if nuclei didn't exist right it isn't it's some fundamental thing that's just i take a bunch of neutrons and protons at a given density what is the pressure in that blob of but, neutrons and protons okay right but then you look around in the universe and you say, oh, there's this thing over there made of neutrons and protons, so we'd better use this equation of state to predict its properties. And over here, we've got something else made of neutrons and protons, better use the equation of state to predict its properties. Does that make sense? Yes, much more sense than before. Excellent. Okay, so um, the uh, oh the um, so I'll, I'll obviously you'll need time to process that a bit and change the <laughs> slides up to incorporate that. Um, also, the graph that you've got on slide 11. Um, so those are the results of three nicer measurements and this other low mass okay. neutron star measurement. So that mm -hmm. should show when you talk about what are the current measurements of, like when on the slide, on the nicer slide, um, you say it's a precision of about a kilometer. Well, you can show that graph, that plot, because you can, then they can see that the sort of width of these error ellipses are plus, are, you know, they're roughly two kilometers wide. Some are a bit more, but... Um, Stick it over there so don't forget. Yeah, yeah. It won't be that tiny. Don't worry. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Um, 
uh, this slide, I was also confused about what to put the button. Um, well, that that is part of the slide that, like that, that's the, um, you know, we need the visual of that three, the, the chain linking those three things. Okay. Right? And that will explain the information that we get from that. Yeah, well, it it's so you've already made this point right here, sort of. Right. If we measure the neutron star radius, then that automatically tells us about the neutron skin of lead. Mm -hmm. Right. And vice versa. And then so increasing the accuracy of our measurements is just going to mean that we have lots of these equations to worry about. Yeah, and we know the new... So the point is that um, when we... Uh, if we take our radius measurement um, with a precision of a kilometer and we take that and we use that to predict what the neutron skin of lead is, we may find that that tells us the neutron skin of lead to within an ac accuracy of about um, 0 0.2 femtometers. Okay. And the question we want to ask is, if you then increase the precision of your neutron star radius measurement for a kilometer to 0 0.2 kilometers, that's going to increase the precision that we know the neutron skin of lead and it's going to increase it from 0.2 femtometers to question mark and the question mark is what we're answering okay so we still want a separate slide for this one well, of that question is part of the slide with the neutron skin equation of state mass radius. Okay, so we right, because that is don't need that guy. Yeah, because it's just gonna be a part of this. Yeah, condensing like four slides into one. I like it. Yeah, exactly. And you've you've seen this guy before. I just copied yeah, yeah, and pasted yeah. that. Um, and then I I just have like placeholder stuff for the results yeah. and conclusions. Yeah. So. So I yeah I sent you the um. A template for the. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I was working well, on right before the meeting actually. Okay, good. Um, does it run if so? I can't get this package to install. So I don't know. I was just messing around the code and now suddenly it, it's wanting to work because like I can run it and, and, and I get I get a plot and I don't know because it's still giving me an error and I, I don't know what it's doing. So. Yeah, that's weird. It also uh, isn't, doesn't have colors. Oh, I just commented out the, the blue set. Oh, right. Okay. But it does show color whenever I have the other one in. Right. So it, so what happens when you try and uh, install Pi, Pi MC three. Yeah, so I tried it with pip and with conda, both mm -hmm. the same res oh My gosh, I got caps lock on. Or maybe I can't do conda on here. I'm just kind of like loads for a minute and it's the same sort of result if I use Comda to install it on the prompt. Mm -hmm. 
I think it might be mad because I'm using Python 3.12. I think that might be what's going on. Right. Yeah. Just get a ton of errors. And... Uh, I don't know. Here, try this. I'm putting uh Oops. try copying and pasting that command. I did try this one actually. Ah, oh, okay, right. Yeah. I was doing some you've, you've been through all the uh the options on the Conda install page. Yep. Yeah, I'll try it again because maybe it will magically start working. Mm -hmm. Cause it it looks like it's doing all right for like the first half, and then it gets mad, and it just doesn't fully install it. Or at least that's what it did like an hour and a half ago. Maybe it's decided it's going to be nice to me. I don't know. Well, that's not a... Yeah, it did this earlier. It just stayed like that for like a couple minutes. Right. And then started doing some stuff again. And then it's like error. Mm hmm It's not um it's not that it wants some other package installed first. I was like reading some forums and stuff of people having similar problems and it wants mm. I, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but the piano, however you say it, that package. Oh yeah, yeah. And so I tried to install that as well. And it also was not working. Okay. So at this point, the easiest thing to do is uh, I just run it and send you the plots. Because, I mean, it, does, it doesn't it does really... Yeah. It's a purely mechanical process. We both have the uh, the data. So I, c I can run it and send you the plots. Okay. And uh, I'm probably going to pester my uncle... who does a lot of stuff in Python and have him help me figure this out because this is yeah. annoying. Yeah. Oh, it's doing something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have to run because I okay. have hours. Um, but uh, Let's see. Did we did we say we'd meet tomorrow? Yeah, I have tomorrow at four. At four, okay, good. All right, I will. In the meantime, I will be sending you the plots as they come in. Okay. A couple tonight, and probably a couple tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Thank you. I don't know what's going on with both my computers lately not wanting to cooperate with me. So. Oh, it happens.
yeah. Okay. All right. So try and make all those changes. Um, I okay. I'll send you the recording, and I will send you that image of the uh, hydrostatic equilibrium equation. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Then I will see you. Uh, um, on campus tomorrow at four. Yep. Okay. I'll talk to you then. Yeah. See you then. Bye. Okay.